Hi, everyone. My name is Claire Lebeau. I am the Chief Advancement Officer for NASEF, the Network of Academic and Scholastic Esports Federations. That is a mouthful, so we'll stick to NASEF from here on out. But um, essentially what we do is we use esports and student interest in esports to connect uh, play and learning. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here so you can see, optimize for video clip, and here we go. So um, as I said, we're going to talk about esports and Minecraft here. So what is NASEF? Just a quick overview. We leverage student interest in esports to help them acquire STEAM-based skills, which can be technical skills, can also be communication, collaboration, problem solving, essentially helping to develop themselves um, in career and life skills through their involvement in esports. We develop a pathway, a pipeline that goes all the way from elementary school up through workforce. So um, wherever you are and wherever you plug in, there's a place to connect esports to the education that you're doing. And of course, there are lots of colleges offering scholarships now for esports. And so that is definitely a carrot for those that are in the high school space. Uh, what we do is leverage student interest as a magnet. So if you see players and games are at the center, that's going to draw kids in for interest-driven learning. And then once they're there, you have the opportunity to teach all kinds of career opportunities and help them explore what might be um, rewarding and interesting for them that's connected to something that they're passionate about, that they love. This is a blow up of that slide, just showing an example of how many opportunities there really are in esports or connected to esports. It's really just like any other sport where, you know, there are this many people that are the professional players and then this many people that are working in the support system that makes that happen. And the same exists in esports as in every other sport. If you go to our website, which is nasef.org, you'll see a career pathways section. And we have all kinds of information for every area of that esports ecosystem diagram, helping to show what the courses are and the skills and careers and that kind of thing. So make sure to check that out. Um, what we're doing is we're building a culture of esports, helping to build community for those who are interested in games and gaming. And this can be implemented through curriculum in a classroom or an after school environment, as well as clubs. Um, again, in that after school environment, it could be schools, could be, you know, Boys and Girls Club or YMCA, wherever. Where we have kids, they're interested in esports. I can tell you that. So um, that's why the clubs are so effective in conveying some of these principles. So let's go ahead and dive into Minecraft. We have several different Minecraft events that we offer. It's free to participate. And if you do not have Minecraft Education Edition for the students who are joining, we will provide it free. So um, what we want to do as a nonprofit, we're looking for the, the impact that comes from engagement in these programs. So let's dive in and talk about a couple of them. The first one, MinaCraft, was a program we ran over the last year, a virtual exchange program that connected kids from the Middle East and North Africa to kids in the United States. And um, they were able to make friends around the world to learn a little bit about each other's cultures and about things like flags and monuments. You know, those all convey the history and the experience of the place where you live. And so we had challenges where students used Minecraft and they would create a team and then in Minecraft, build something that represented a flag or a monument in their area. And then they would explain it. Uh, we have them share out their builds using, we use a tool called Flip. It's a free uh, video screen recording app. And so they would reflect on what they built and the significance. So for example, you can see the US flag at the bottom here, kids building a flag from the US, if that was the one they chose versus a local one, they would explain why we have that many stars, why we have that many stripes, what's the significance of each of those. And in doing so, they're learning, but they're also sharing what they learned with others. And then in that flip uh, application, 
kids who are participating from other areas can log in and see the videos that were created. And so if you look at the top left here, we have um, the flag from Kuwait, which changed. And so the original flag is on the left and then the new flag is on the right. And you can see some of the uh, comments that were made in that flip group. So kids are really encouraging to each other, really enjoying just making these connections and learning about new places. And so we're building this foundation where through the game of Minecraft and challenges in Minecraft, students are building a global understanding and you know just recognizing we're all human. And that's so important. They had so much fun looking at each other's builds that we ended up putting together some Zoom calls so that they could connect with each other and have some conversation. And so we talked about, you know, food and school and music and all of those things. But again, just a wonderful platform to build understanding between youngsters in two different parts of the world with very different, um, you know, backgrounds, but still all the same and all human. And that was so powerful. We always provide for our challenges resource guides, and this is a sample of the one for Minecraft. Um, we'll outline exactly what the challenge is. This is written by seasoned educators uh, who will take their experience and put that into a lesson plan so that it's really easy to implement. So you can see here, we outline the challenge. We'll give links if there's research that could be done, maybe some suggestions for how to carry that out. We'll have always suggestions. You can see here at the bottom, see how to submit on Flip. So if there are other tools we're using, step-by-step -step instruction, always trying to make it as easy as possible to implement these programs so that um, you don't have to worry about the setup. You can just get to the impact of the kids. Farmcraft, such a fun program. Um, Farmcraft teaches about agriculture and climate change and food security and distribution. We run it in two seasons. The pre-season, kids will create their own builds in Minecraft. And it could be something like build a replica of a marketplace where you live. And then again, upload a flip video and tell us about that marketplace. Um, that's the pre-season. And then we build out a custom world in Minecraft. It's so immersive. It's so fun that the kids get to uh, play in. And so they will learn lessons about agriculture from playing this game. And I'm going to show you a video. This is from our 2022 world. Just a quick snapshot of um, what that looks like. So here we go. So fun. You can see there are so many lessons built right into Farmcraft and uh, just a fantastic way for kids to learn. So oops, let's go on to the next one. So the one that we did this year, we added in additional information. At first, we were just having students learn sort of how to take care of a farm. But, you know, we had a lot of supply chain issues in the last couple of years, and it was a great opportunity for students to learn about how do things get from a farm to market. So through the game, they would learn about the farmer's process from decisions they make before planting, then how they manage the farm once everything is planted and growing and who their customers are gonna be and how they're gonna get crops to them. So, you know, really powerful. Um, you can see here, this is an overview of the world last year. Uh, just so much fun and so immersive. Students love it. That's why we had kids from over 60 countries participate. I mean, just phenomenal. Of course, there's 
surprising, which never hurts. Um, and we'll have something similar when we offer farm craft this year. Um, so again, team guides, challenge guides, all the information you need to implement this program quickly and easily. I had an amazing opportunity last week to go to Rome to the World Food Forum that was put on by the UN. And I share this because when you have the UN and the um, FAO putting on a forum saying, how do we address issues of food security around the world? Well, of course, everything impacts children and the kids need to be involved in understanding. And they're recognizing the power of farm craft as a tool to teach those youngsters. So um, you can see here a few pictures of the kids. They had so much fun playing farm craft and learned a lot. And every teacher that was there said, I'm definitely gonna implement this in my classroom. So um, again, just shows, I think it shows the power of this that an organization like the UN is saying, this is a, a valuable tool to use with our kids. Um, I'm gonna play one more video from you for you. And this is um, has Italian subtitles because foul happened in Italy and we prepared this video there. But you will see um, this is some of the students flip videos that they had submitted. And uh, just so that you can understand what they learn and really see the benefit of this program. What I like most about Farmcraft was that I could make new friends. Every time we finished a challenge, we played music to celebrate. We distributed the task of removing weeds of killing caterpillars, staying in charge of sprinklers, getting rid of the butterflies, etc. among teammates. Choosing tempered as the biome to be fed had a huge downside. The biome multiplied had a major impact on the seed cost. We tried to preserve the climate score for both of our attempts and had zero spoilage of boxes. Unfortunately, while transporting food to mountain biome, we lost a considerable number of boxes. Hello, I am a member of Kane, here to show you how we export and import goods to our marketplace. We live on the Mississippi, so we decided to use boats as one of our main transportations. This is our barge, where we have shipping containers full of food that goes down the river and to the rest of the world. Our Farmcraft journey so far has been so fun and exciting. We hope for a road to victory for Farmcraft 2023. This is Iblis Fire signing off. We have noticed that the elements of farming that was different in the farm craft map is the seeds, which we have modified in the computer before starting farming and get different desirable colors, taste, etc. It is related to, to real life where data scientists modify genetically the seeds for better results. We shall try to use all the things that we have learned from the challenges and use them to our advantage. Tetris was a fantastic addition to the game and we loved the challenge of generating our own seeds to farm. Through this experience, we learned a lot and discovered things we never thought were possible to be in Minecraft. Most of the time we had to face water shortages as our chosen biomes lacked plenty of rainfall. But luckily, we got rainfall in some seasons of the desert biome. Despite all these limitations, we believe that we achieved the perfect climate score. I will use experience to teach people about farming. I will remember this experience. I will also remember that if we take care of the world we live in, we all will be happier. Oh my goodness. What a fantastic lesson for those kids, right? I mean, you can see the variety of what they learned in that program, just amazing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on now to, um, try to move on to the next slide. Here we go, Rube Goldberg. So Rube Goldberg is an engineering program. And uh, if you know the Rube Goldberg challenges, it's to create a crazy contraption to accomplish a simple task. And we always hold live streams so students can learn about how to use Minecraft to do these crazy things, all of the engineering principles behind it, things like the six simple machines, the engineering design principles. 
humor, storytelling through create through Minecraft, that's all wrapped into it. Um, I'm going to skip this video for the sake of time, but hopefully you will be able to click the link yourself and check it out. A uh, similar compilation of students sending in the creations they made and sharing their work that they are so proud of. Um, so here's where... Oops. Gave you a little sneak peek there. Um, again, all kinds of resources provided. We have tutorial videos, as I mentioned, um, providing information on using Flip, on different aspects of engineering. What we want to do is equip you to incorporate these programs as easily as possible. We do also offer traditional esports. That's not the topic today, but if you're interested, you can check that out on the website. It's completely free to join NACEF. Just go to our website, nacef.org, and click that orange button. It takes you a couple minutes to fill out the form and you're in, and then you can join these programs and start implementing for your students. So hopefully that information helps you. Looking forward to our session in person and hopefully you'll join that. But if not, you should have lots of info here. And if there's anything else that you need, please feel free to reach out and email us. Thank you so much.